Hello, ladies and gentlemen, crypto deep divers. Welcome back to Weekly Crypto. Today, I'm going to talk about the geopolitical tension in the Pacific, especially in Southeast Asia. So the reason why I didn't talk much about crypto is because the geopolitical uh, conflict or tension can affect uh, the stock market, cryptocurrency, and of course, commodity. So we need to look at the uh, big picture because rather than talking about a fancy altcoin or a certain altcoin, when are we going to pump? Uh, it's important to understand the big picture right now because uh, right now anything could happen, potentially military conflict or war as well. If things happen, then all this crypto or your fancy altcoin uh, may not survive, right? So I think that's why um, I know I saw some comment people saying that um, it is more fun used to be you know the the topics at the time we talk about a lot of altcoin and all that but right now uh, we are in a critical times at, at the moment so there's a lot of things behind the scene happening right now I think it's important to understand the big picture and before we get into that make sure you subscribe to my channel and also hit the notification bell so you don't miss out the upcoming. Uh, videos. Also, you can follow me on Twitter, library.tv. And uh, of course, you can join my Patreon group as well. So Patreon group, I have already posted a whole bunch of videos. Uh, if you're interested, you can join my Patreon group. And of course, you can also uh, send me a message in the Patreon group. I And I usually answer all my uh, questions in Patreon group as well. So let's talk about the uh, the geopolitical uh, tension uh, or uh, potentially there's going to be a military conflict and also war possible as well. So right now, uh, it's in an election season at this time. And uh, the coronavirus, uh, I believe the U.S. government has informed the U.S. Um, back in uh, late December. And the U.S. government uh, should have uh, done a, a lot of things to prevent this from happening. And, and yet, I think there's too complacency or they don't take it seriously, or they would think that uh, this thing is not going to happen in North America. So they thought this thing is only maybe happening in Asia, or they may have a different agenda, or there's some other agenda behind the scene as well. We don't know. So, and I don't want to make a whole bunch of conspiracy uh, theory and all that uh, in the YouTube channel, because I may potentially got banned. And um, so, I mean, if if I can uh, foresee this uh Back in uh, mid-January, I, I believe the uh, U.S. intelligence probably will get, uh, they have a, U.S. intelligence probably get a lot more inf information than the regular people, right? So they have, a, you know, they have a fancy computer modeling. They can model, they can put this in a model or simulation to forecast this, uh, the spread of the virus. So um, if, if you just, uh, if you don't watch the mainstream media, if you, uh, if you just uh, read the articles or scientific scientific journal coming out from the uh, from the epidemiologist, uh, it's not that difficult to um, forecast this uh, uh, pandemic basically. And on day one, I talk about the World Health Organization uh, is corrupted. Uh, you know the secretary, uh, the director, uh, Tetros, right? That guy, he is basically corrupted. And then I. Uh, I hope I will not get banned because I say something like that. Uh, potentially, uh, I don't know. Um, so he is on the he's bashing Taiwan at the very beginning and support China on the very beginning. So I talk about that at least two months ago. And right now, all these things coming out servicing uh, about this textual guy, right? So I don't want to get into that as well. So um, so let's talk about the South China, uh, especially in the South China Sea uh, area. There's a lot of conflict. In the area, and so this is the South China Sea, and uh, surrounding by China, Taiwan, Vietnam, and Malaysia, Indonesia, Philippines as well, and all this little little small island. They have uh, histor historically they have a uh, dispute on those island, island, and uh, a lot of people claim those islands belong to them, and also. Um, yeah and yeah and also there's a whole bunch of dispute of uh, island uh, between China and Japan as well, and right now the China uh, the Chinese warship has been patrolling in the area, 
showing the military muscles. And sometimes they also cross the uh, the territory of some of the uh, uh, country. So uh, they, you know, Chinese the the Chinese government always saying that I'm in on the international waters, but a lot of times they uh, cross near the border of some of the countries. So this create a lot of tension. And recently they have been patrolling on the area. Um, I think for the last two uh, last six weeks they have been. Um, <clears throat> They are trying to show the muscles and all that. At one point, they uh, crossed the area near the um, uh, Vietnam area and the surrounding islands. Uh, there's oil oil field in there, and the oil field is operated by a Russian uh, company. So there's a whole bunch of conflicts in the area. So this is a uh, this is a this is a potentially um, a conflict area you can see surrounding by so many countries Malaysia Indonesia Philippines and Taiwan and also the Chinese uh, warship has been trying uh, has been getting very close to the uh, Taiwan uh, border as well as a result because of that um, and of course they want to do this to threaten Taiwan and China is very ambitious to take back uh, Taiwan but uh, right now uh, it's not going to happen because of the international pressure. And China did really bad in terms of um, diplomacy, diplomacy is really bad uh, in terms of the, uh, for the coronavirus. And basically, uh, the mass that Italy uh, get they're saying that in the in the main, in the in the uh, media in the Chinese media they talk about they donate a whole bunch of masks to the it uh, to the Italy right, but Italy saying that basically you you guys didn't donate the mask. Uh, basically we buy from uh, we buy from China. And all this mask actually back in January, uh, I think Italy has donated a whole bunch of uh, PPE to China. Now China's selling all this uh, mask and PPE back to Italy three times or four times more more than uh, normal price. And yet the Chinese government got it for free uh, a few months ago. So you can see the unscrupulous nature of the Chinese Communist Party. So, <clears throat> but anyway, so because of the uh, okay, because of the uh, uh, the uh, military uh, uh, pressure uh, in the area uh, between China and Taiwan, so the U.S. military plane basically flew over Taiwan airspace more than twelve times. In the past three weeks, that's a lot. So, because China uh, on the sea, uh, they have warship on the sea, uh, trying to uh, get very close to the uh, Taiwan uh, Taiwan border, and as well as um, near the Japanese island as well. So, Taiwan and Japanese are the airlines of the U.S. So, U.S. also, uh, you know, basically uh, showing to the to the Chinese government, hey, don't don't. Don't um you know don't do something uh, uh don't show don't do something uh harmful to the airlines right <clears throat> so U.S. also showing their military muscles as well in the Pacific and in, in the Southeast Asia uh, in the South China Sea area so um so the thing is right now um you can see there's a lot of uh I know uh. In, in the in the U.S. Uh, in the mainstream media in Europe in the mainstream media they don't talk about these things right now, and uh, there's a potential uh, conflict military conflict as well as a uh, po potential war as well. Uh, you never know. All it takes is some type of incident to uh, make this uh, to to become a war, right? Re just look back in history. Everything is an incident, uh, a small incident or some type of incident that trigger a war. Uh, back in, I think back in World War, uh, World War One is because of the uh, assassination of a uh, Austrian priest or something like that uh, for the royal family or something. I can't remember. That's triggered the World War One. But the thing is, <clears throat> those are just a trigger. But of course, behind the scene, there's a lot of bankers supporting the war. Right? Uh, the bankers will support which side they have potentially is going to win then they can they can they can make a lot of money out of it so this is uh in the history of mankind is like that even world war one they were find they were trying to uh, figure out which which side is going to win then they're going to buy the 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 sovereign bonds of that country 
then that's how they uh, make the money. If the other country lose, they're going to lose tons of money, right? <clears throat> So uh, basically, China threatened the stability in the Pacific, especially in Southeast Asia, because of this. all these islands historically, little little islands uh, historically, has been a whole bunch of dispute between uh, China, Vietnam, and between China and Philippines, as well as Taiwan and Malaysia as well, and also as well as with Japan as well. This is uh, a very uh, uncertain times right now. And of course, because of the pandemic, uh, they try to take advantage. China trying to take advantage of that. Then they're going to. Sh uh, China is showing this. Uh, uh, the CCP trying to show the military muscles to the neighboring countries in Southeast Asia, and uh, and of course the USS uh, uh, Thor, uh, uh, Roosevelt. Uh, this this uh, the this is a nuclear. Theodore Roosevelt uh, is a nuclear warship. Basically, they are parking on Guam right now because of the coronavirus outbreak uh, inside the inside the warship. And um, Guam is also in the Pacific area. So they are very close to Asia. It's like Gu Guam is basically three hours from Japan. Uh, wait, not three hours. I think it's two hours. I think it's three hours from Hong Kong. Uh, three hours from Hong Kong and probably yeah, around maybe two hours from Taiwan. So so that's why this is very strategic. This warship basically um, is in the Pacific area. They, In case of something happened, they are ready to strike. And of course, they don't want uh, the mainstream media talk about this uh, Theodore Roosevelt uh, warship in the area. Uh, but unfortunately, because of the coronavirus, this thing go public. And right now, the uh, the ship was stuck at Guam because of the uh, over 50% of the sailor got tested positive, but they have no symptoms. But unfortunately, one of the sailors died because of COVID-19. And uh, that person is only 41 years old. Oh. And I think... Uh, on so I think the sailor tested positive on March thirtieth, and then the and then he passed away on the thirteenth. So almost like maybe in two weeks, uh, pass away. Forty one is pretty young, seriously. <clears throat> and uh, so that's why this warship is in the area as well. So uh, I think is every everything is connected. Seriously, uh, you should you should be well aware what's going on. And of course, China, uh, China's warship also moved near to Malaysia as well. And the South China Sea tension uh, is uh, is on the rise right now. And right now is in the election year, right? And um, if the if the economy go downhill, uh, in order to to uh, to divert the attention on the economy, economy probably they will shift the shift the uh, attention to going to war uh, in China or something like that. Uh, this is just my speculation. And don't forget with the lockdown, like more than I think uh, right now, almost all the state, maybe 90% of the state got locked down already. And all, 5 million uh, people already claim unemployment. And this is the this is the highest unemployment claim since the Great Depression back in 1929. And if with the longer lockdown, uh, <clears throat> more and more people lose their job. And a lot of people already lost their job already. And eventually, those people cannot pay their mortgage, and they will be there will be a real estate crisis as well, right? The uh, real estate meltdown coming up as well. So all these things uh, can bring down the whole economy, and maybe I don't know if this is part of their plan. I'm not sure. And also, because of this, they probably want to divert the attention back to uh, Asia in China, and they will say, "Hey, this is uh, the uh, problem of China." But I don't, I don't. I mean, I agree that this is. Uh, the the problem the origin is from China, but then, um, but then U.S. intelligence should have got all this information. They should have well prepared, uh, uh, with all this virus, and and U.S. shouldn't be suffer that much. And with right now, like with so many people die and a whole bunch of fear with the lockdown and everything, all this could be prevented. All this lockdown could be prevented if uh, U.S. are well prepared. But unfortunately, <clears throat> uh, they don't take it seriously. And they have all this information probably at least uh, back in the end of December. If they um, if they really take it seriously, they should aggressively do contact tracing as well as quarantine. That's how uh, Asia has been doing, like in Taiwan, in Hong Kong. Uh, they have more highly densely highly densely populated area, densely populated than New York, and yet their cases are the the. The cases and death tolls is less than New York. So 
because they take things seriously. They have a painful experience from SARS and they have tons of experience of SARS, so they know how to handle the case. And it's a huge difference. And then they do contact tracing as well as quarantine uh, very aggressively. And the citizens are very vigilant. Everybody wear a mask uh, back in uh, January. I think at the, uh, the mid-January, people start wearing masks. And then they have uh, hand sanitizer. And then they are very uh, cautious. And they try not to... Uh, they also... I think they, they have been... Uh, they were from home very early on back in January. So they implement all these things very early on ahead of the game, basically. And also Hong Kong is so close to China at the border. And there's a whole bunch of uh, mainland Chinese going to Hong Kong almost every single day. And same as in Taiwan, the border is very close and the Taiwanese uh, government shut down the border right away. And this is a very good decision. But Hong Kong cannot shut down the border because Hong Kong uh, is run by the Chinese Communist Party. They can do whatever they want. They don't care the lives of the citizens. And a whole bunch of mainland Chinese uh, gushing into the Hong Kong board, uh, gushing into Hong Kong to seek medical treatment. And uh, all, this, all these things, uh, I mean, could be avoided uh, in the U.S., but and yet uh, things are getting worse and worse every day because uh, in terms of testing, even nowadays, uh, the testing and contact tracing is not aggressive enough. And... Uh, <clears throat> And they argue that uh, they already lose the opp opportunity for contact tracing. Uh, yes and no, but yet in Taiwan, in Hong Kong, they still do contact tracing. Uh, and yet their cases uh, is less than, I think maybe Taiwan is around 500. Uh, I don't know about Hong Kong right now. So their cases is less than 1,000, and the death toll is uh, in probably in a single digit. Uh, so they did really well. So we should, I mean, in the U.S., in the Europe, we, uh, they should learn from uh, the Asia, how they do things there. And in terms of the uh, nursing home in New Jersey, they found 17 bodies crowded in a tiny mall, uh, and then they uh, is found at the New Jersey uh, nursing home. And so 68 people linked to a nursing home uh, in New Jersey have died in recent weeks. This is, I, I think, this is a little bit crazy. And I think people just look at the service, hey, uh, mismanagement of all this, but I think there's a more fundamental problem of the nursing home. Maybe the nursing home on day one, uh, they have a history of mismanagement of the nursing home to begin with. So, <clears throat> so these things will never happen. I mean, will, will not happen in Asia. If this is happening in Asia, there will be an outcry. And this is ridiculous. I mean, and yet U.S. is in the it's a first world country, right? Right now, it seems like in a, in a third world country. I think it's very disappointing to a lot of people, right? They, they can't highly rely on the CDC, they rely on the WHO, and all this, all this institution disappoint them. And unfortunately, as a citizen, as a, so you have to take action yourself, you need to protect your, yourself, so uh, that's all you can do, because the government failed to protect you, and unfortunately. So, so I, tell, uh, I told everybody uh, back uh, at least two months ago, make sure you wear a mask and stuff like that, and um, uh, and finally, uh, the CDC is saying you have to mask, uh, you have to wear a mask, but it's a little bit too late, too little, too late. But and right now, uh, all you can do is protect yourself, right? <clears throat> That's all you can do. So, uh, in terms of the reopening, they, it looks like they're going to reopening probably around mid-May or second week of May, depending on which state you are in. And uh, I suspect uh, after the reopening, there will be a second wave of infections because. Uh, testing is not done enough. The testing is still very behind. And in terms of contact tracing, uh, I don't think they did any contact tracing to begin with on day one. And that's why it's spread all over the place right now. So, And they will say, hey, right now we already, already passed the uh, contact tracing. We will do mit mitigation. So mitigation basically, are you saying that just uh, let everybody get infected? Uh, I don't know. So let me know what you think about the uh, potential upcoming uh, military conflict uh, between U.S. and China. And there will be a whole bunch of military uh, tension in the Southeast, uh, South, South China Sea. Let me know what you think about this. I want to talk about this uh, uh, probably three or four weeks ago because I, I learned about this uh, a while back. But back, uh, but but it's just too busy to do so many topics every day. So, But this can be a potential. So... <clears throat> 
in my channel, I try to look ahead of the time instead of just uh, focusing on the moment because you have to uh, plan for, for the future, right? You don't just uh, look at the every moment right now. I think you have to plan for the future, what you want to do, right? In terms of your health, your financial, and, and in terms of how you take care of your family, things like that. So let me know what you think about all these things. Do you think we are going to have a potential uh, military conflict uh, between US and China? Let me know what you think about this. I would love to hear from you. Uh, please comment below. and I usually answer the comment. And um, for my Patreon member, for more sensitive uh, questions, please po uh, post it on Patreon. Uh, Patreon. I will answer in Patreon. Uh, because right now, there's a whole bunch of censorship in YouTube. Uh, and Facebook, so I can't talk too much in uh, in YouTube. But right now, this topic probably I will get banned once again. So, <laughs> so basically, you can't, you can't talk about anything at this time right now. So, uh, please comment below. We'd love to hear from you. Also, help my ranking in YouTube, and I will continue to provide quality video you, for you guys. And remember, crypto deep divers, we the people take control of our money. Stay wise, stay safe, peace. I'm not a financial advisor. Uh, investing in cryptocurrency commodity. Ken has inherent risk, please use the due diligence. I'm also not a financial uh, healthcare provider. If you have any questions or concerns about coronavirus, you should talk to your primary care physicians. And stay safe out there.